How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel now today. I'm sorting a little issue out with the car. Um, something I've noticed when I first had the car but I just haven't got around to sorting it is the reverse light. Now when I put the car in reverse, the light doesn't come on. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, oh it's copy the bulb. Now I know with these is when you put the car in reverse and you have the when the front window wipers are on, the rear wiper will come on automatically. However, this one it doesn't. So it leads me to believe it is the reverse switch. Now these are really common on these and they're only up for 10, 15 pound parts. So it's not exactly expensive to change. I just haven't got around to getting it changed. So what I'm gonna do is get it to do that today, but I need to move the car over from there to there to give myself some more space as I need to jack the car up because I need to support the gearbox, which I will explain why further into the video. So what I'm gonna do is obviously get the car swapped around, because that's my old man's car, swap them over and um, then get the car in the air, take the under tray off so I can get to the gearbox so I can support that. Oh, it's a bit more rigmarole. I was kind of hoping the uh, I wouldn't have to change the, I wouldn't have to get the car in the air, I was put the jack underneath on the gearbox, but unfortunately there's an under tray on there. So I need to take that off so I can get to the gearbox. So let's crack on with that. Right then, obviously this is the under tray under here. Um, and it's held under these, whatever they're supposed to be, but I've noticed well, those other two was the hand tight, but this one's stuck, so I'm going to try and put... <laughs> I don't know what that is supposed to be. What's that? It looks like a Torx, doesn't it? I think it's a Torx. So I'm going to talk I me mean, these two, and this, this one here, that's a bolt, and that was just hand tight. This one here, that was just hand tight. So this one's the only one, and it's the only one that seems to be done up properly, so I'm going to drop this off. And then I'm assuming there's some right at the back as well. So I'm going to get some access stands in here first before I start crawling in for the car. And then once I've done that, take the shit shield off and get to the gearbox. And obviously I need the jack then for the gearbox, which again, I'll explain why in a bit. And we're off. Um, obviously there was a, a bolt there as well, either side. So there's one there, one there. And obviously the two at the back. Um, but it's Good to see that it's all dry under here, so it's nice to know that the car definitely hasn't got any oil leaks. Obviously, if you've ever first time you took a, some off a, a car or an under tray, obviously, if, if a car's got any sort of leaks, the under tray catches it all, doesn't it? And you don't know, but yeah, looks all right under here. Just look like it's had a an engine mount at some point, a rear engine mount, so it looks really clean. Um, yeah, so the light ain't great under here, guys. Right, okay, so that is that done. Now to get to the top side, and I'll pop the bonnet and explain further. Right then, obviously I've took the top cover off the battery because what's gonna have, because the, the gearbox mount switch, is, gearbox uh, reverse switch is down here, I'm gonna have to take the battery off. So I'm gonna take the battery off and obviously take the tray off. These are two 10 mils, so 10 mil there, 10 mil down there for the back one, unplug that off. And then it's case taking off this. I'm guessing that this mounting heart, this mounting bracket here, there's a bolt down there for it. Take those two off, take that off, pull the battery out, well, in theory anyway. Um, I'm assuming there's some specific way this tray comes off, but I'll have to uh, look further into that once I've started on doing stuff. Oh, right, crack on. Right then, uh, because I've done under everything, there was, these were two 10 mils, 10 mil at the back, 10 mil at the front, and this front part here. It's just sort of like clipped in, so you just unclip it out and it gives you access to pull the battery out. Now in theory, this should come out. Right, doing this with one arm's gonna be, one arm's gonna be difficult, I think. Oh no. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll get back to you guys. Right then, battery's out. Sorry guys, just had to use both my arms to hold this out of the way and pull the battery out. <laughs> so then you've got these two bolts here, which hold the battery tray in, so two 10 mils. I'm gonna whiz them off now, that should give me access. Oh, there's one there as well, one at the back. So that 10 as well, yep. So three 10 mils, so one in that little recess thing. Um, one here, one here. I'm gonna crack all them three off and put, they sh should be able to pull the uh, battery tray out then. Right then, the battery tray is out. Now, what I was saying before about needing the jack to support the gearbox. Right, what I'm gonna need to do is I'm to put the jack on the gearbox because this gearbox engine mount needs to be taken off as well as these four bolts either side. To pull that off, well, to get the bracket off, so it give me access to the actual switch, which is, you just can see it there. It's literally right there. So I'm gonna to get this out of the way. So once I've done that, I can then, obviously, once I pull this out of the way, it give me a load of access now, I have all the room for activities. 
to get to the actual um, gearbox mount itself. I mean, gearbox mount. I keep saying gearbox mount. The uh, reverse switch itself. Right. Oh, let's have a go at this then. Right then, as you can see, what I'm going to do, see that, this little bit here? I'm going to get the cup of the jack just to sit on this part of the gearbox here. Just to just basically rest it on that. Obviously, if you do this on a sump, you're supposed to use, um, or you need to be using wood. But as I'm just having it on the gearbox and that little bit that hangs down there, oh, just, just back it off a little bit, just so it just sits on it. So now, when I, in theory now, when I undo the mount for the um, gearbox mount, or the bolt for the gearbox mount, it shouldn't drop, in theory anyway. Right there, so what I've got here, weirdly, these, these these bolts here, these four ones that are here, they're 15 mil. <laughs> God knows why. And you've got these two 10 mils here. So it's like, this is like a cover, like a plate thing, I think, that goes over the, end, the gearbox mount. So I'm gonna take these, undo these 15s, take this 10 mil, take the plate off, and that should give me access to the gearbox bolts, gearbox, uh, the engine mount bolts, and crap that, that off. Then the lot should come off, should. Right then, the uh, got the tray things over, cut, took off. Now this bad boy here, I'm pretty sure it is an 18. Yep, 18 mil for this boy here, and you're gonna need a big breaker bar to crack these because I know I know that these bolts up for the engine mounts are on there. So I'm gonna try and crack it. And the clue is as well when you're undoing this, guys, when you've got the um, the jack underneath as well, when you once you've cracked it. When you start undoing the bolt, the bolt should start coming up. If it doesn't, if you start doing, doing the bolt and it looks like the gearbox is dropping, you need to reevaluate your, your jack position because obviously the jack isn't in the correct position. So obviously when you're undoing the bolt, the gearbox is just dropping off, which you don't want really. You want it to be undoing the bolt and it coming up. So I'm gonna get this crack now and then we'll move on. Engine mounts off. As you can see, it hasn't really gone anywhere because I've got the jack under there. Now, here it is. This is the the offender here, I need to get out right. As you can see, you need, obviously, the, the gear selector's in the way, so what you wanna do is just, just pull it, pull the, pull the select, um, the selector out of the way. Right, that's out as far as it's gonna go. So just literally just turn, the, just grab that and just pull it around. I'm not sure what gear it is, because I'm not in the car. Now, what I need to do now is unclip this thing. Let's try and figure out where the clip is. I'm guessing underneath somewhere. Right. Right, I'm gonna do this one and it's almost off, there we go. Okay, so now, what I need now is, I think it's a 22. So I'm gonna put the ring round, round there. Hopefully, uh, yes. My ring span is a little bit too big for this, I think. I might try and find a smaller ring spanner. Right, okay, we're on, ish. Right, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack this off. Then it shouldn't be in there too tight, guys. All those looks a bit pretty crusty, if I'm being honest. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get this cracked off as best I can, and I'll come back to you. Right then, we are off. Uh, yeah, like I said, this ring. What you're gonna do? You can if you, it depends how thick your ring spanner is. This is quite a thick one, but you can just about get it on there just to give it that first crack. And I'll smack my arm on the uh, on the fuse box, which is brilliant. <laughs> but yeah, it was just enough to crack it, and then you can just undo it by hand. So I'm gonna get the new one out now and I've looked on both. Make sure I've got the right part. So James, I hope you've supplied me the right part. <laughs> right then, as you can see, this is a new one. This one here. And just compare them looking side by side to make sure they sort of look the same, which to be fair, they actually do. So James, you might have done all right on this one. Uh, the thread looks different now, I think. Oh my God. Don't tell me this, no. It's hard to tell. The thread definitely is different, but I'm gonna try and wind it in and see how it feels. See if the pitch is the same. It might just be because it looks cleaner, but I don't know. <laughs> right, let's wind it back in. Let's see if it goes in all right. Well then, the new one is in, as you can see. Um, I was convinced for a minute that it was the wrong part because it is a bit fiddly to get in at the angle. So it was, I was trying to pull it in, it was just turning. I was like, oh no. But I managed to get there in the end. I was I can't really, oh, mind you, I probably could, just throw the battery in there just to, and pull it in reverse just to make sure it works. But, uh, what do I do? So I don't want to put it all back together, go to test it, and it doesn't work, or 
for, for example, let's say it's the reverse lock's now stuck on, and so I'll have to take it all back off again. So I might try and just put the battery in somewhere and then just put it in reverse and make sure it works. Right then, moment of truth, let's put it in reverse. See if the reverse lock's on. And it is. Yes, I got a reverse light. <laughs> right, actually, let's take out reverse and make sure it's not still on. <laughs> right. Yes, happy days. Right, brilliant. That's a nice fix done. So now, it's a case of reassembly. Let's put all the car back together and then I'll end the video. Right then, we're all back together up top. Um, I just need to put the under tray on. And also, I have noticed, whoever owned, this is called a symposa pipe, and it sort of gives like a sort of noise into the cabin. I have noticed, I did wonder what the tape was, I just thought it was just because it had been taped onto the back where it goes into the cabin. It looks to me like it's been deleted. Like it's just been, oh, I don't, I don't know what the look of that. I'm gonna take that off and put it back on. I've, oh, I can't believe I've only just noticed. I think it's because it's been sort of hidden at the wire, so I don't really see. But yeah, and I've just pulled it out to have a look. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, I don't like that at all. Right, that's all coming off. I'm gonna try and put it on properly. I don't know if they, they require clips or something, but like I said, like worst comes along, I'll just tape around here, around the pipe around here so it stays on. Cause I don't, I don't know what sort of um, benefit you get from deleting that. You just lose the noise in the cabin. Right, let's do that now. Right then, we are all back together. Under tray is on, car's back on the deck. Um, with this, Symposa pot thing, <laughs> it's a bit rough. I'm not gonna lie. Um, the end of it looks broken, so I couldn't get it to go back on. So, the only option I've had is just basically to use du um, duct tape, duct tape the two pipes together for now. That's the only thing like, option I can really have. I mean, I didn't like it, it was just blocked off. I mean, it's obviously it's there for a reason. I know all it is is basically it's fake noise to the cabin, I know that, but I can't see the benefit of having it blocked off to be quite honest with you. Um, other than just losing the noise in the cabin, which, I mean, focus guys, feel free to chime in. Um, is there an up upgraded version of this I can buy, something, a better system? Or does it benefit the car having it blocked off? Because I don't know. Um, feel free to chime in in the comments. If, if you know more than I do, like, like I said, it's been a long time since I've had a Focus ST. Um, I know I've heard about people blocking these off, but I can't see real any real benefit from it, um, other than you just lose the noise in the cabin. But I want to change that because that just looks absolutely rough. I, like, I mean, it, at least it's doing what it's supposed to do now, but it looks rough. <laughs> so as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, hopefully, if you are fitting a reverse switch to your car, hopefully this video might have helped you out. If so, drop a like, you know, feel free to subscribe if you're new. So that is it for this one. Um, make sure you smash that like button, guys. It really helps me in the algorithm. And uh, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you on the next one.